In this video, we're looking at astronomy, space, and galaxies, and in particular, looking at the scientists that pioneered and revolutionized our understanding of what a galaxy is and what is out there beyond our very own galaxy, the Milky Way. So this video is on Edwin Hubble. This is the Earth Science Classroom. The telescope was invented in 1608, and since then, telescopes have become more advanced, larger, and able to capture more light, thus giving a more clearer picture of what's out there in space. And it took until the early 1900s for telescopes to improve to a point where we can actually analyze and observe distant stars, distant nebula, further than our own Milky Way galaxy. So prior to the 1900s, due to the telescope's ability to see a clearer or less clearer picture, these galaxies were seen as clouds materials called nebula or nebulae for plural, and these were thought to be beyond the Milky Way galaxy. Then along came a young man by the name of Edwin Hubble, who finished and completed his PhD in astronomy from the University of Chicago in 1914. And he went to California to work with or use a telescope with a 100-inch lens, at the time was the largest in the world, and was able to collect information, data, and light in much more detail and clarity. So these nebula or nebulae that were understood to be further than the Milky Way galaxy, these clouds of materials, were now being analyzed with much higher scrutiny and detail and Hubble figured out that these were actually standalone galaxies that were beyond our own galaxy Milky Way and they were a great distance in space away but they were their own galaxies and in particular he was studying Andromeda our next local galaxy and this Cepheid variable star was used in Andromeda galaxy to figure out the interstellar distance back in 1912, and he used this to figure out how far Andromeda was from the Milky Way. Now this Cepheid star is a star that fluctuates its energy and pulsates its energy over a certain time or period cycle in a way that it can be used to calculate distance in space. And then he, he started to search other areas and formulated and calculated that there were millions of these galaxies, these former nebula, but now known as galaxies, these more detail, you can see the stars rather than just the dust, and these galaxies were all over the universe. And then, beyond that, he started to classify all these new galaxies that were seen through his telescope, because each galaxy had a certain shape or a certain characteristic which could be classified into a scheme. This was done in 1926, then three years later, he wasn't wasting any time. He then started working on his expanding universe theory, which was basically a preamble work before the Big Bang Theory, looking at red shift and looking at light and looking at movement of galaxies away from each other to extrapolate that the whole universe as a holistic system is moving away from a single point. So Hubble's scheme in 1926 was a tune and fork diagram, so to speak, with three branches. One branch was elliptical galaxies that appeared the oval or elliptical shape, and the degree or eccentricity of the ellipses were in different categories. And there were about 15% of these seen in his telescope of the combined total of galaxies. Then there was the spiral and barred spiral. Now, these are the most common with about 60% combined spiral galaxies. Now, barred means there's a accumulation of stars in more of a rectangular shape in the center of the spiral of the galaxy. And spiral would be just there's no central mass, it's just one point, and the spiral arms are located around the central point. Now, there is a degree difference in the spiral and barred spiral based on how tight or how loose the spiral arms are from, from the center of the universe. So the A, B, and C relate to the tightness of the spiral arms. A 
being tighter, B being the medium, and C being looser. And the same thing with barred spiral. So you have SBA, SBB, and SBC. And then with spiral, you have SA, SB, and SC. Now there is also lenticular galaxies that have really no defined little shape. It's just more a mass of, more of a circular mass of a galaxy. And they're around 20% of all known galaxies that he looked at. And then there was a small amount, 5% of irregular galaxies, where this again, by, based on the name, is an irregular shape denoting that gravitational pull and the force of gravity isn't working as expected as it usually does between both elliptical, lenticular, and spiral. But there's something else going on in the galaxy to create this irregular shape. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on Earth science.